thunderstorms across Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. Let's take a look at it on AWIPS. This is the same workstation used by the National Weather Service. And we see numerous storms south of Nashville to just east of Memphis, approaching the Huntsville area. Now, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect. Let's take a look at that. There it is, northern Mississippi, southwestern Tennessee, within this slight risk area extending down towards central Georgia. Also active up in New England, Massachusetts, Connecticut. They're all in a severe thunderstorm watch as well. And there's our graphics for that part of the country. Dew points in that area in the mid-60s, so not terribly high, but certainly enough to support thunderstorms. The surface map this afternoon shows a Canadian front sinking south through much of the northeastern part of the country, including the Midwest and the north central U.S. The leading edge from about Paris, Texas, back towards Roswell and extending east towards Atlanta and northeastern North Carolina. There is a little bit of a triple point right up there around New York City. Warm front extending to the east, and that warm front helping to support those thunderstorms in that part of the country. Behind the front, a 10, 18 millibar high right there over Nebraska. Cold air advection coming into the Midwest, so we will have a couple nights of cool weather. And in the southwestern U.S., dry line from another triple point around Big Spring, Texas, into the Big Bend. Temperatures up into the 100s in far west Texas, but a little bit of a moderating trend. Instead of seeing widespread 100s this afternoon, we're seeing upper 90s and very low 100s across the rest of Texas. Also, there has been some moderation in the heat in the southwestern U.S. Instead of 116, we're seeing 109 at Phoenix at the hour, 109 at Las Vegas, and 113 at Palm Springs. And this will give you some idea of the change over the past 24 hours. This is the 24-hour change ending at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. And it definitely has cooled down across Oklahoma, Kansas, with that cold front sinking south. But even down to the south, that air mass has cooled as well. However, up north in Nevada, up to Wyoming, up to Montana, this area is heating up. And as we mentioned back on Wednesday... That's associated with that ridge lifting to the north. Maybe a proper word for that is ridge building. That's certainly happening right there. The subtropical high itself, that's sort of remaining in place. So this represents an expansion of the warm air northward. And you can see what happens over the next week or so. A continuation of the pattern. The center of that high is about 597 decameters, which is... Definitely way up there. When you start getting up to 600, that's where it becomes rare. And in fact, if we take this model all the way through the end of the week, it's threatening 600. There's 599 across New Mexico on Tuesday. And then when we get up to Friday and Saturday, there it is, 600. That's a rare sight, seeing a 600 decameter contour at 500 millibars. So it looks like we're in for a stretch of very warm weather in the southwest. A little bit of a reduction in the monsoon activity confined to the Mogollon Rim, the mountains of southwestern New, New Mexico, and far northern New Mexico as well. In southeastern Arizona, that activity has diminished as well. And of course, the deserts are completely dry. And a substantial reduction in thunderstorm activity in Nevada and Utah. There is a, still a boundary right there from about Wendover up to the northeast near Pocatello. And just a few weak thunderstorms going up along that line. Then heading out west and north into the Gulf of Alaska. A persistent low pressure area in the Gulf of Alaska still spinning around and this vague front hung up against the coastal range. And as we go north, mild conditions in Alaska and then out there in Canada, no change since Wednesday, still hanging on to that wildfire smoke, warm temperatures. And then along the Arctic Ocean coast, we've got 80s up there 
I think that's going to be around Shingle Point, somewhere in that area northern Yukon. And you can see the north slope of Alaska also quite warm, 74 at Dead Horse near Prudhoe Bay and 65 at Barrow. The town has been renamed. I can't remember what that name is, but heading out east, mild conditions in the Canadian High Arctic, 30s and 40s once again, and dropping back south, a little bit of warm air coming northeastward into Ontario, and looking out east, this bear clinic system near Montreal, pushing to the northeast. Big Rig Steve on Interstate 90. I can I can never catch him driving into weather. Clear as a bell out there. Let's take a look at the satellite. Yeah, he's somewhere in this area. And I do appreciate Big Rig Steve because he does grant permission for us to use his videos. Eventually we will see some weather. So as we mentioned, there will be some significant ridge building in the western U.S. and much of the western half of the country will be shut down. The 700 millibar chart up at 10,000 feet, this is a good way to look at things. And I've got an overprint of temperature. That's the dotted red lines. If you have an area of interest out here, look at those temperature values, because that gives you some idea of how capped things are. For example, in Texas, widespread 12 Celsius. Anytime we see 12 Celsius during the spring, that means a solid cap. This time of year, it's a little bit hotter, so the temperatures are not as significant as during the spring, but still that does correspond to some unfavorable conditions for storms. You can see out there in the Rockies over the higher terrain, as high as 20 Celsius in the four corners. And what we see over the next week is a continuation of that. Now there is a little bit of a reduction in the temperatures out here due to the cold air advection coming out of Canada, some upper level lift, getting the adiabatic cooling, and the temperatures drop to 6 to 8 Celsius. So that corresponds to a little bit of an increase in thunderstorm activity. However, that will not happen because if we look at the moisture, that northerly flow scours out the moisture. So there's what we have right now. The Stronger moisture at one kilometer off the ground right there along that front. And then as we go into Saturday and Sunday, the moisture gets pushed down into the Gulf Coast region. So the thunderstorm chances will actually go down because we're getting that drying coming in from the north. And the only moisture reinforcement we get is around the periphery of that anticyclone in Texas where we have the return flow. And the precipitation forecasts do bear that out. Over the next 24 hours, lots of precip in the southeast ahead of that front. And as we go into Sunday and Monday, it gets pushed down into the Gulf Coast region and gradually offshore and into Florida. So that's going to be Monday. And there's Tuesday. So a drying trend is that dry air comes to the south. And looks like a dry period for the rest of the week. Although up north in the Great Lakes region, looks like some thunderstorms popping up by next Friday. There's the total precipitation over the next seven days. Keep in mind that the subtropical ridge is right through this area, so it does have Texas shut down. But across the Rockies and the higher terrain, the orographic lift and intense heating is helping to support some thunderstorms, although somewhat reduced. And of course, temperatures, that's a big consideration. You can see 110s popping up in the southwest region tomorrow. These are going to be the high temperatures for tomorrow. You can see the effect of that cool air across Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee. 80s for highs, but down to the south, 100s rearing their heads once again. For Sunday, you can see the heat building up north into the northern Rockies, 100s across Idaho. And for Monday, the heat circles around the north side of that ridge into the Dakotas. And by Tuesday, 100s showing up across South Dakota and Nebraska. And you can kind of see that heat migrating to the southeast, working into Minnesota, Iowa, looking at 101 for Des Moines for next Wednesday, and spreading eastward into the Midwest, into the Corn Belt by Thursday.
So this time of year, we start looking at the tropics for our relief because that subtropical high, very difficult to break down. Well, we've got Dawn out there in the Atlantic. That's heading out to sea, getting picked up by the prevailing westerlies. And we've got this other possibility for cyclone formation, possibly affecting the leeward islands. Let's take a look at the GFS. So here's the picture we have right now. This is a plot that looks at precipitable water. That's the color shading, the purples and cyan colors. The lines are the surface streamlines and the surface pressure. So this kind of shows you where all the important stuff is. Very easy to pick out the disturbances because they've got enhanced areas of precipitable water and some convergent flow where the winds come together. And if it's even more developed, you'll see this closed circulation appearing on the map. We also see the anticyclones. There's one right there. That's part of the Bermuda High, located north of Dominica. And there's another branch right there. And that extends through this entire belt. That is the subtropical high being broken down a little bit by that tropical cyclone. Definitely getting some enhanced precipitable water off of the West African coast. That's all two inches and above. And you can see that one system right there next Monday working its way to the west and approaching the Leeward Islands, but it opens up into a easterly wave, so not much left of that. That's that's that wave. So we got to look out in this region here, not in here. That's the deformation zone. Yeah, let's draw that out. That's the deformation zone. The flow working somewhat like that, inbound into that circulation like that, and then spreading out in both directions. This is the convergent side, so that's what we're watching for disturbances. There's one right there. But as we track that as it moves westward around midweek, not much going on with that. It opens up as well. So it looks like we're heading into kind of a quiet couple of weeks, and the weather will be dominated by this anticyclone across the Atlantic, extending all the way into the U.S., and helping to pump that moisture into Texas, the southeast, and the Carolinas. So here's our short-term weather. Remember that front is running about like that, extending up to that triple point near New York City, warm front like that, and a occlusion up to the north. You can see those storms right along that front, and Texas and Oklahoma being shut down by that subtropical high. Over the next few hours, we're going to see that MCS moving into Atlanta, maybe around midnight, tracking right along that boundary, maybe a second surge right there into Mississippi. That seems to be blowing up there by about 4 a.m. And in the upslope region around Lubbock, looks like storms as well towards the pre-dawn hours. Then going into tomorrow morning, things die down. You can make out where that front is, pushing south of Interstate 20. And with that, some clouds and some regeneration of storms further to the south and southern Alabama, southern Georgia, so kind of a rainy afternoon there. And gradually all the activity sinks southward, reinforced by that Canadian air. And really, that's about all there is to it for this afternoon. I want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for helping to keep the program going. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporter show and on Wednesday for everybody else. I'll leave you with some more footage, courtesy of Greg around the Texas Hill Country. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.